Hello, Andrew here from Weedale in County Durham. Uh, I'm going to do an unboxing today of the new Sabre 250 10 inch bandsaw. So I've already opened the box to see what the contents are like. And if I show you in here, we've got a polystyrene top protecting the saw. We've got the instructions in there for how to set it up. And I'm going to check out the instructions, unbox it, and then set it up. So I'll take this out of here. This is obviously the fence with the, the gear on. And this is the, the side fence on there, which will assemble. Polystyrene in the top. Put that out of there. The fan saw itself is, when it's all assembled, 35 kilograms. So as you can see inside the box, everything is packaged in the polythene. It's well packaged and well supported for transit. So we've got the table from the bandsaw there and I can see already that it's got a very, very fine film of oil on it. It's covered in plastic. So what I will have to do is the same as I did with the bed extension and the outboard on the Regent I'll take the plastic off, I'll clean it all down, I'll use the degreaser and then I'll show the assembly but I'll, I'll degrease and clean it the same as I did with the others and then we'll skip straight to the assembly. So there's the table out there and then so we've, got, we've got the plug in here, the three pin plug with the normal adapter there which is the same as what you would have on a, a kettle adapter and we've got the there's actually another one in here by the looks of things, that must be the continental one. And there we've got the, that's going to be the wheel for, I would imagine, setting the, uh, the blade, the tension on the blade and the balance on the blade. And then we'll have a very important piece of kit, the push stick. So the push stick's there in the box as well. Craig has done some fantastic videos on the bandsaw on setting up so check out Craig's videos because they're far more in depth than what my unboxing will be and he shows you how to set all the bandsaw up correctly and there's also maintenance videos being done as well like how to change the tire, fold your blades up and maintaining your machine so that it works perfectly. Working on my own, I think probably the easiest way to get it out the box. Oh, here's the crew coming to help us. Can you see, yeah? That's my little girl, that's Indy. So, Indy, I think what you'll have to do is go into the main workshop. Is your brother there? He's here. Yeah, he's there. I think we'll, we'll put Come on. Janet, maybe stress your Come on, off you go. Stop over there while I'm using this hand and knife. Okay, so the crew's in the other end of the workshop just while I in this box I'm just going to put it down the side I think that's the easiest way and then I will keep the boxes for them to be transported back but I'll, uh, I'll put that down the side because when you're on your own you've got to figure out the best way to actually get the, the band saw out so there we are it's in polystyrene again there probably the easiest way is just to easy it out forward like this if you're in doubt, I mean, I, I haven't actually got my back belt on. Um, oh, two bits of plywood there. Top and bottom's of a nice cigar box guitar. Oh, yes. Be able to go on a blues ball. Look at yeah. that lovely thin ply. I've been looking for something like that, John. Brilliant. Of course. I'll put that to one side. And then, uh, so we've got it in the polystyrene. It might appear just uh, if I lift it up like that in the polystyrene and then I can gently raise it out which is well packed like raise it over there tap that out there we are that's him tap that out of there and we've got Ah, that's that's the actual fence mechanism on there. Put that to one side, and then I'll just 
I'll get all of this so as I've got it for transportation back to the head office. But there you are, record power, Sabre 250. The BS250 has been a really, really good selling machine. There's your Continental plug, plug on there as well. So what we'll do, I'll stand up, straighten me back up. As I say, you could put your back belt on, but it is only 35 kilograms. And that's with the table on, so this will do less. So I'll put my hand underneath there, back straight, lift it up, and I'm just going to put it straight onto this filing cabinet here. And I did have the option of having a set of wheels on it, but I felt as though the filing cabinet might be more useful. And I'm going to, I'll probably bolt it onto the filing cabinet, or at the very least, I'll use some anti slip router mat. But the other thing that I wanted to do is actually use it on the bed of the layer for when we were doing filming as well. So here we go, Andrew. So here we have the Sabre 250. Built onto the stand. So you get the stand frame and the wheels and the mechanism that allows you to release so that the machine is nice and stable. When we press the pedal down, the wheels come in operation, allow you to wheel it away to the desired position in your workshop for securing back onto the floor again. So I'll put anti-slip anti router mat onto the bed of the lathe. And actually, Janet, if you come round here, I can, I'll move the boom over here, the filming boom. And we can take the bed off there. What I'll do is I'll put the, the anti-slip mat on there. There's some on there already for the, the tool board. And the saw itself, I can put on here then as well, just so that I've got it in a position whereby if I lift it onto there, there we go. That's it, that's that's secure there. I'll probably make a bigger board and a couple of pieces of frame to go around there, similar to the bench that I had that I made for when I was working with the blues pole. But that will be excellent for me to be able to demonstrate how to use the bandsaw and uh, have it in the recording studio as well. Right, I'm going to take the table outside. I've got the degreaser with this. I'm going to take it outside and I'll do it on the, the table outside as well because this degreaser is great. It's a WD-40 special fast stacking degreaser. But the smell of it, it's, uh, you've got to do it outside because you can smell it all day in the workshop. So, so I thought I'll just pop this outside. There's only really the table and the Allen keys that will be cleaned down with the degreaser. So uh, I've got the um, gloves on. Again, these gloves are pretty good like because they, uh, you can actually use them over and over again. They're the better quality ones. I get them from a friend of mine who has a spray with, it, with his garage and he gets them for us. And, but of late, they have been quite difficult to get hold of, obviously, for, with the corona. But they seem to be readily available again. And mind haven't said that last time we were in Lidl, there wasn't many toilet rolls. So I'll clean this down and clean that off. I quite like the smell, but it seems to linger this smell in the workshop. So there we are, nice and clean. They are clean the edge up. assemble the, the table. So we've got the instructions here, the record power manuals, it's in French, 
English and German so ideal for anywhere in Europe but uh, obviously just the English one for me because my German and French isn't that brilliant but we shall read the instructions I've got all the bits and pieces here ready and then we'll go over to the bandsaw and I will show you how to assemble it okay well I've got the bits and pieces here I've got the four nuts and the spring washes and the tabletop bolt ready to go in I've got the allen key which is appropriate to those nuts and um, I've took the, the central plate out so that it's easier for the bed to go on so we can just slide the bed through there where the blade is you could if you want to take the blade off even but I'm just going to slide it through there and then I can hold it from the bottom I'll grab one of the little nuts and bolts and for that I'm probably going to need that little spanner so there we go there line that up like that There we are. Started one off into there. No, I haven't. Not hard. Again, take your time. It's not heavy, but you need to balance it until you get it started. If I had three hands, I would hold it for you. Yeah. <laughs> I've got it there, Janet. I'll tell you what you can do, though. Can you pass us that little spanner that's just onto the bed there, the little silver spanner? Thank you. Ta. And then I can just bring that round like that I'll just tighten that in a little bit with the spanner so as it's got a hold but not totally tight and I'll get the next one and then the next one should go in easier now because we've got one in the first one's always the most difficult to get in and then we can just tighten that down there that's it there we go that's got a hold now I'll just tighten it so much by hand And then I'll grab the, the two from this side, I've got the spanner there, and again, let me get down here, let me both on the spring washer. It's a neat looking machine, isn't it? It is. It reminds me of a filling station, <laughs> like a, aye, a miniature aye, like size a filling station. <laughs> like a filling pump. Yeah. yeah. Well, these are the, the, the BS250 was always very, very popular. And uh, there we go. This one is the, the Sabre. So, and it's just a, an improved model, a new model. And I'm looking forward to trying it out and seeing, putting it through its paces. So, let's see how that, he's our Indy, she's come to help Indy's us. Indy's helping. You're a good girl, aren't you? So, just the last nut into here actually what might be easier to do that i've got three in there it might be easier if i just loosen it up just lift it up a little bit i can get my hand in there easier from this side from the other side it's better on an angle but from this side it's better at that point there so there we are again i can get that started there we go make sure it's not cross threaded There we are. Turns in by hand easy like that, you know that you haven't got it cross threaded. So, on with the spanner. Just make sure. I'm just going to pop the blade guide in there now. And then I can nip them all up. But not forgetting the nut and bolt on the underside of the bed. Just we can set that up like that. And I'll set that 90 degrees. I'll set it. I'll, it's on naught there. So if you just look down here, Janet, at the front where the spanner is, and you see that's that's the nut and bolt that we would need to make sure that the the bed every time it goes back after it's been angled to whatever degree you want. Every time that goes back to there. And I've got this set now, bang on knot on the gauge of the bed. I can 
tighten that at that point as well. And there, I'll use the spanner and just bring the spanner up just till it's actually just level with the underside of the bed like that. And then we can lock this nut in here. Hello, Indy. We can lock this nut in here and then uh, she's very interested in mine, Janet. She is, isn't she? Isn't she? Yeah. Now that, put that on there, that on there, and that's done. So then I can just use this little lever action round here and swing it around so you can see it, Janet. There. That little lever action there, that's a sprung lever. I'm just going to tighten that up and that's in position. And now these boards here, what I'll do, I'll just, I can hand tighten them again there but what i'll do i'll nip them all up so i'll nip them up make sure everything's fine and then we'll come back to the next stage okay so i'm reading through the instructions and the next thing that we've got to do once we've got the blade the bed actually securely fixed is take a little square and check it against the blade there and see that the blade is square with the table now that little square that i'm using is very very old it actually belonged to me dad uh, my dad was a plumber and heating engineer and I've got the this one and I've got the, the full size one there as well. So that was the company that he used to work for, TM and Browns. So nice to keep all of and great. Every now and again you just need a little square for a little job. So there we are, that's that done. Fence rail there, which has got the, the actual dimensions, the scales onto there. That goes over that semicircle here. And then what we do is we use the star bolts to secure it into place. So over the semicircle there, and then onto the guy. You can, if you want to, you can actually start the star bolts off first. It's probably easier. Start that off first there. There we go. That one into there. Like that, and then we can just pop that into there. That's over the semicircle, that one into there, and then we can tighten them up. Make sure it's in that little tiny recess, that rebate. Just tighten them up by hand onto there. And that's that fixed. So then we're ready for the fence. So here we've got the table leveling board. And the table leveling board, it's got a washer on. It's actually secured with the wing nut so that wing nut will screw into there so i'll just put it into here push that down to there it's below the surface of the the table and there when i wind this up there that fits into the semicircle of the fence you just wind that up tighten it up until it's just finger tight there we are you can Take your little Allen key if you want and just nip it with the Allen key. So that in the Allen key in there and then I'll just nip it like that. That's it. So that's nice and secure. We're ready for the fence. Right, well, we've just got the fence to fit on now. And the fence itself, it's got the piece of steel here that the actual fence goes into the T-section there. And that will slide into the T-section there. So. If we look at the fence on here, the fence will go onto there like that, and it's locked with that lever. Now that is set so that we'll fit the fence onto there, locked with that lever, and you can either slide the fence in that way, pull this out into the, the T section, you can slide the fence in that way, and then we tighten up with the, the knurled nuts, or you can slide it in that way, so that you've got a higher fence, which is probably better for when you're ripping veneers or anything like that. And that is from the right. However, if you wish to use it on this side, you can move it over to that side. And all you do is just undo the wing nuts, turn this around the opposite way, and then you're able to put the fence on this side with the T reels in there. I'll have it on this side. That's the way I normally use it. And I'm right-handed and I will have the high fence on that side as well, because I will be using this for a number of different projects. So I'll tighten that up on there. And on there, I'll just 
slide that forward onto here so it's flush with that and there we are we can tighten that onto there if there's any fine adjustment required we'll adjust it so there we go that should be fine if i take the square again put the square onto here you'll be able to see that that's absolutely perfectly square with the bed there and if i put the square onto there you can see that that is square with the bed there so we might need to have a tiny little bit of lead out for curve but we'll set that up later but the best thing to do is to go onto the record power site look at craig's dvds or videos or have a look at the video that you get with your or the stream that you get with the bandsaw that you buy because craig does some fantastic detailed videos for you to be able to follow and make sure you use your machine properly and safely next thing to do i haven't even plugged it in yet oh the final thing i need to do is just pop this onto here and that just pushes into there that's the blade tensioner and then if i swing this around this way let me show you on the back there's also a lever on the back there swing around there i'll show you that lever there janet that over that side drops that wheel so now the blade is out of tension so you can take the blade off again have a look at craig's videos on how to tension the blade up and that's the the tension wheel there so we've got a little tool holder here where the allen keys will all go i'll just grab the allen keys johnny so we can pop these allen keys into here they're nicely safe in the tool holder there we go and that one needs to go in there that's not the smallest one that one is so there's the tool holder on there okay well that's the record saber 250 all ready to go it's a lovely looking piece of kit and i'm going to enjoy doing a number of different projects on it what sort of projects will you be doing on it well initially i would like to do my dicky bow ties because the dicky bow tie if you do it in the solid stock needs to go into a jig and be sliced in half on the bandsaw so i'm going to do a video of how to cut the solid stock in half with the the jig but i'll be using it for my blues balls i've made a jig for cutting the blues balls necks and i actually used the bs 250 when i've been at harrogate shows newark shows and also when i've demonstrated in austria and germany to make the blues balls next so i'm going to do a video on how to use it for that purpose as well and lots of other little projects with nice jigs that Good. can go with them as well the other question i was wondering about was electrics do you need an electrician to come no, and rig it up for no. you or do you just plug it in yourself no this is the beauty of it is it's a 240 volt supply i've got the both supplies here this is the continental supply with the two pins on it and which i'll actually keep that and put it in my tool bag for when i demonstrate in europe because it's always handy to have a, a continental supply like that especially with those fittings because they fit a number of different appliances and this is the one for this country it's wrapped up in a cable tie there and this will plug into here just in the back there's a little i'll turn it around here johnny you can see where it plugs in in the back there we've got our point to plug it in it's just underneath the motor here Don't we? I'll swing it around that way there yeah just underneath the motor on there the kettle plug will plug into here like that and then we can plug it into the mains and it's good to go so the only other thing i do want to mention is i want to mention about this the push stick Whenever you're using your bandsaw, read all of your safety instructions that come with your manual. There's a really in-depth amount of safety instructions there. All of the videos that you'll see on the Record Power site will give lots of safety informa information, especially the ones that have been made recently by Craig, but there are still some available from Alan Holtham as well. And Alan made some superb videos for Record Power, but always use the push stick. So I will now go to the bandsaw and show you how to cut this sticky bow in half using jigs so okay so what yeah. we're going to do we're going to cut these nibs off the end here and just square this up on this end and for that i'll start the saw up i'm going to put that into the v block there 
so that is secure in the v-block i'm then going to just cut across there move this well away from the saw blade turn it round the other way position it in the v-block and then cut the end off there check that those both look the same stop the blade from rotating wait till the blade stops then you can pick your little bits and pieces up and move them up there the extractor's on now so now what i want to do again i'll practice this with this spare one that i've got i'm going to hold the pieces like that now i've got a couple of options this is my preferred option because it keeps my hands well away from the blade to hold it like that and just take it through the center to cut it in half this is the first jig that i made to hold the dicky bow ties and what that did that held that there on the center and i could cut through and hold it there now that worked fine but i found sometimes it was a little bit sloppy so now i use this method and i much prefer it i think it's much safer and what it is it's simply just two angles there those angles are cut at 70 degrees with a little bit of hook and loop on there and a little bit on there and it means i can hold that secure like that and i can keep my hands well away from the actual material right and cut that through there i use these in germany and actually a dicky boat tie in germany is called a flieger and in austria it's called a marshall a marshall so there's some german and austrian that we've learned so right side up where you want that can you see on there we've actually got medullary rears shown here so it'd be nice if that was split down the center to show those medullary rears so what we can do is hold that like that and hold that there so then i set the saw away and i just carefully Put through the material, slicing the dicky bow in half, take your hands away, just let the blade stop naturally, and then we can see our two halves. There's a little bit of an oil mark on there, that's not a problem, that is from the residue. It's a brand spanking new saw, so there's a fine film of oil on the blade. So there we are, if we look at that, if I turn that round the opposite way, and that marries up then that means that both sides are the same on there if that marries up like that so then we'll take the 12th century Durham Cathedral Oak one now that's the one that we want in here that's the bit that we want so again hold that like that and like that so we've got it positioned where we want it start the blade rotating pipe hold Cut through. Stop the blade. Let the blade naturally stop. I can knock my extractor off now. And then the blade is stopped rotating. I can move the template out of the road. There we are. And these are now ready for sanding up on the lathe. As we say, a picture paints a thousand words, but a video, it paints a million. So stay safe and stay well and bye for now. We'll see you again. Bye bye. Always read your safety instructions. Stay safe, stay well, wear your appropriate PPE and have fun making shavings in your workshop. Look after yourselves now and enjoy. Bye.